A pleasant good afternoon to one and all present here. Uh, I'm Sam. I'll be the presenter for today's workshop and uh, I'll be assisted by Sibyl. Uh, Kunal or Bharat, can you acknowledge if I'm audible or not? Yes, I'm here audible. Okay, cool. Um, uh, before I start out with the workshop, I request all of you to have your Tinkercard account signed up and running. Remember, as I mentioned in the mail, I will request all of you to have your Tinkercard, uh, Tinkercad account signed and up and running. <clears throat> so if you have any doubts regarding the Tinkercad account, please raise your hand or check in with the PR department. They will get back to you and the necessary steps will be taken to give you a Tinkercad account. <clears throat> okay. I assume that no one has any doubt or any trouble creating a Tinkercad account. Okay. Before I add on with the workshop, um, let's say now Team Vikasana. Okay. Team Vikasana is mostly based on robotics, AI, and automation. We wanted to conduct a workshop and we chose this topic as Arduino. Why? The reason why Arduino is that, see, at a given present situation, or let's say for the upcoming generations, okay, we will be, you know, leaning towards robotics, automation, okay, and as a basic foundation for all these both is Arduino Uno, okay, Arduino Uno is a basic foundation for creating a robot or creating an AI, okay, this will help you a lot in case if you want to take up a studies or if you want to get into Team Vikasana, this will give you a plus point because Arduino basic knowledge is very important. Okay, I will just give you the content of how it is going to happen. We'll be having to, uh, Sibin will be giving you a basics of what is Arduino Uno and all the other 30 session. Uh, I know it will be a bit boring, but trust me, if you bear with us and if you, you know, jump towards the circuit connections and the Tinkercad process, that is where the fun part begins. Why are we teaching you the basics? Why can't you guys learn? Because simple. Uh, the basics which we teach will be taught in an easier manner, you know, in a language where it is easily understood by the students. So kindly hold on till the theory pass get over and then we'll forward it to the Tinkercad. Uh, Sibin? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Sibin, you can present your screen and start uh, explaining the theory part. And uh, students, if you have any doubts or any other problems regarding the team or during that uh, meeting, you can get in contact with the uh, PR department, no one else but your group admin, WhatsApp group admin. Okay, they will be uh, available for to clear your doubts and other things. And in case you have any uh, doubts during the meeting or for the workshop, you can raise your hand. I will unmute you and we will again go ahead with the <clears throat> workshop. and. We will tend to see that each and every one of you are in the in sync with the teacher. So I'll be asking a frequent Q and A during the meeting so that we know that I tend to see that all of you are understanding and in sync with the teaching. Okay, uh, Sibyl. Yeah. Yeah. The stage is yours. Okay. Thank you, Sam. So uh, before we start, you need to know what an Arduino is, right? So what is an Arduino? In simple words, I can say that it's a microcontroller. So then you'll Think what is a microcontroller? Basically, a microcontroller or MCU in short contains one or more CPUs along with a memory and a programmable input output peripherals. That means uh, you are using uh, your microprocessor right in your computer. Uh, that that that's the uh, basic thing. But here we are using microcontroller. My in microcontroller we have all the CPUs, uh, then programmable devices and memories inbuilt inside this thing. Uh, our microcontroller. So, when you hear when you hear a word named Arduino, you should have two things in mind: a physical board and an Arduino IDE. IDE is a short for uh, Integrated Development Environment. So, I'll teach you that now in a minute. What is physical board? As I said, uh, in this workshop, we'll be concentrating more on Arduino Uno, which is a beginners friendly uh, board. There's a, a list of family like there's a list of components we uh, we can get under Arduino like Arduino Mega Uno Micro Nano. 
I'm not going deep into that. Uh, this is the IDE. Basically, we write an Arduino code in a language called processing language. So uh, if you know a bit of Arduino, you may be thinking that, no, it is C. But it's actually called processing language. The later, the fun part, the, or the magic begins when we click this verify button. You can see on top, I've circled it. When we click on that verify button, uh, the code that you have written in digital, uh, sorry, uh, the code you have written in uh, processing language will be converted into respective C language, uh, um, like digital word, digital write. I'll say what it is in uh, future lectures. Will be converted to subsequent C language programming, and the are uh, using the uh, AVR GCC sensor that is basically a C program compiler. That language will be converted into machine language and will be sent to the respective board for processing. I guess this is clear. So uh, what is microprocessor? You have a microprocessor in your computer, right? So uh, without a laptop uh, with, in your computer, without any screen, mouse, keyboard, can you work with that? No, right? For that, we need some input and output devices. These are the input and output devices of our Arduino board. When we want to connect or when we want to uh, uh, when we want to integrate the uh, external environment, we use these ports. Like digital, uh, and uh, we use these ports. So first, jumping forward to the digital I/O pins, from zero to thirty, these are called digital input output pins. What this basically means? It can mean like digital. Digital means only two values: zero or one. Zero refers to what? Low or off? Zero volt. One refers to high. Five volt. Basically, Arduino gives out five volts, so I'm saying it as five volt. It can gives give only two values, zero volt or either five volt. Now, what if I want to control a motor? I, what if I want to control the speed of a motor? I, I want to uh, dim or lit a circuit, uh, LED. Then I'll use these pins called PWM pins, pulse width modulated pins. These are uh, marked with a uh, small asterisk symbol. You can see it, three, five, six. Nine and ten are the PWM pins. What PWM means? Pulse width modulation. Yeah, I'll teach you. Consider a one duty cycle. So uh, this will be off for twenty five percent or fifty percent, say fifty percent, and on for fifty percent. So the uh, duty cycle of this is fifty percent. So because the uh, the a PWM pin was on for only 50% of the time, and the rest 50% of the time it was off. So it has a duty cycle of 50. Likewise, it varies the duty cycle to give out a varying voltage. Uh, when we are using variable pins, we um, when we are using these pins, we make sure you uh, write analog write as speak when we start our experiments. No, so uh, that's all. Now from analog, we'll move into analog pins. What is analog pins? A0 to A5 are the analog pins in our Arduino. Or Arduino Uno, I'm specifically talking about Arduino Uno. So what these pins do? If you want to uh, measure the temperature of our environment, what do we do? Uh, it, it is not a, a digital, of course it is not digital, it is uh, analog signal. Arduino cannot, microprocessor, modern digital um, processors cannot use analog signal post-processing. So what we will do? We'll take in the values using analog input. This is only input. This is not an output pin. We'll take analog uh, values from analog input, process it. There is a technical uh, sampling and uh, modulation, quantization. Everything is there, but I'm not going deep into it. Uh, this is the basic I'm touching. So that will be converted into digital signal using analog to digital converter. Now I have the analog signal converted to digital signal. Now, uh, Arduino can easily process that signal and uh, can run the code according to the needs. Now, what is crystal oscillator? What this basically means is uh, you are running a micro digital this is digital processor, right? Like, so for any digital processor to run, you need to give out clocks. That clock will be given by this crystal oscillator. And coming to the power section pin, that's all about crystal oscillator. Coming to power section pin, we have three modes to power Arduino. We have three modes to power an Arduino. Let's just jump out that box. These are the three ways to power your Arduino. If we have five volt regulated voltage, we use these pins. 
be an ground to power our ordinary and if when you connect this to your computer or through your ide you will use usb port i uh, the usb port will be giving power to the arduino but what if uh, say you don't have a 5 volt you have only 9 volt at that time 9 to 12 volt at that time you will connect that directly to the power button and using the voltage regul voltage regulator inbuilt voltage regulator using the inbuilt voltage regulator will be converting that uh, 9 volt or 12 volt whatever you give to a 5 volt constant 5 volt supply because arduino needs only 5 volt at mega this is the heart of your programmer uh, or a or processor uh, arduino this is the microcontroller at mega 328 microcontroller so uh, i'm not teaching uh, going to uh, analog reference and uh, icsp pin this analog reference if you want to give a reference external voltage we uh, to the analog uh, input you use analog reference icsp means means if you want to access the bootloader programming that we you usually we want to access we use an external programmer uh, circuit connected to this icsp pins so i'm not going deep into that i'll just skip that so important part you know just the basics just the basics that you need to come into the experiment section now you need to download the arduino ide so for that open your browser and go to arduino.cc it's a website arduino.cc from there click on software install the file and launch your board and launch your program once it is done when you connect your arduino board you have to select the arduino you know that arduino family consists of many boards see even uh yeah, arduino nano arduino mega arduino mega AT, adk leonardo i want only arduino uno so i select board then select arduino uno from here so now the id i have selected and registered uh, the board as arduino uh, uno uno and now the machine cycle uh, that encoding uh, machine cycle converting will be done with respect to arduino uno now after that we have to maintain a communication port we have to create a communication channel to send the program for that in the tool section the same tool section go to port and you will see some serial ports it will be uh, for each ordinary it, it may be different it's according to your laptop so for me it was com4 so i selected com4 it was the only port some may have some may show three or four port uh, if it is showing three or more port just unplug your arduino one of the port will disappear then plug it in that uh, the disappeared program will uh, com will now reappear that you have to click i guess this is clear now Yeah. Uh, now I'll seven jump minutes. into Tinkercad. Uh, Sam, I uh, can show yeah, demo on Tinkercad. Yeah, uh, students, yes. Uh, remember, the basics. Why we are testing on the basics is simple. Wherever you go, when you say that you know Arduino Uno, okay, they tend to ask you the basics. Okay, so that's the reason we are sticking with the basics. And now, what was uh, given our introduction, right? Arduino Uno and Arduino IDE. That is for the physical world. Okay, now let us say that you are having an Arduino Uno in now in your hand. Okay, connect that to your laptop, and to code that you need to be using Arduino IDE. So that's the reason we gave you a brief introductions towards that. Now, as given situations, we are using virtual thing, so we'll be going for Tinkercad. So let me just uh, see if uh, you are in sync with the teaching. Just a second, uh, seven. Let me uh, tell me when the screen has been presented. Yes, sir. When is my screen visible to you? No, sir. No. Okay, just a second. And what about now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, students, please pay some attention over here. <clears throat> so once you log in to your Tinkercad, this pretty much will be the home page for you all. <clears throat> 
Um, give me a second, the page is loading up. Yeah, uh, students, if you can pay some attention, uh, as you can see, this will be your home page once you sign in to Tinkercad. So this will be your profiles and as the left side, you can see a list of things. So this will be your home page and this is your profile on the left side. You can see three designs, circuits, code blocks, lessons. I would like you all to click on circuits. OK, just try to click on circuits. OK, once you click on circuits, you will be able to get a new circuit design. So this is what I would like you all to be presently at. OK, so let me tell you again. Once you sign, once you sign into the account, OK, this is what you will be having. So this. Will be your first front page on the left side. You have options. Click on circuits so that you will be able to get to circuits. And once you get onto the circuits, you will be able to create your new circuit. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, seven. Yeah. Yeah. I'm moving forward. Yeah, move Just forward. Or let's carry on. Uh, students, if you have any queries, please raise your hand. Okay. Uh, now, I would like you teaching, and if you have understood or if you need any clarification, you have no doubts. So please give a raise of hand so that we may go ahead. Please raise your hands so that you are in sync with the teaching. Perfect. Now uh, moving forward, you have our stand set. Click Thank on you. circuits. Uh, students, you may lower your hands. So I stand set. Click on circuits. Then create new circuit. Click on that. A new workspace will open. And now first thing you have to do is change the name of your workspace for that. Click on the uh, random number it will come or random alphabet it will show at first. Click on that. Write any uh, name that you wish. Click anywhere outside that box. Now it have changed to XP number one. Now after that I want you to focus on components list. Click on that, make it to all. Once you select all, select breadboard. Place it over here. And before uh, jumping into the actual experiment, you need to know what is a breadboard. So, actually, a bread, what is basically a breadboard? A uh, breadboard will have horizontal, this thing, this horizontal will be shorted together. These are the pins. These four pins will be our power rails, or these are the uh, ways through which we give power to the breadboard. So these are horizontally connected. As you can see, that uh, when I click on one pin, the whole pin got selected. That means it is shorted internally. That means if we give power to any one of the pin, the whole rail of that pin will be given that same amount of voltage. Now this is negative, so ground will be active. This is the area, like you can see A, B, C, D, E, up to J. This is the area where you place your component. So in components uh, folder uh, space, see when I selected one pin, the whole green arrow is uh, lit up. That means they are internally short circuited. That means uh, so these are vertically so short circuited. Yeah, yeah uh, students, see uh, breadboard. Okay, why do we use breadboard? Is simple. When you're using a components which is of more, okay, let's just say you're using five to four components, okay, it is not advisable that you keep the components in you no know, in a messy way, okay. Breadboard is used so that it is basically to organize your components, okay. Your circuit will be organized, okay. When you do a presentation, you should be careful to give a good design. So for that, we use breadboard. It comes of uh, three sizes: breadboard mini, small, and the normal size. We won't go to breadboard mini because it doesn't have the positive and negative. 
okay that's why we stick to breadboard small so default thing where we use is the breadboard small in case you have a lo lot more than let's just say 10 to 11 components you go with breadboard okay that that breadboard will be of a larger size let's just say it is a double of the breadboard small understood so that's the reason we're using the breadboard okay and as we've been said it is vertically connected the positive and negative okay there'll be no charge unless and until you give it a charge okay and the uh, component area will be connected row wise column wise i'm sorry so column vertical wise and that is seen over here so when you select one the entire four pins will be shorted together okay uh, so when i guess you can move on to the board track oh uh, i mean for the for the module one module one we will be looking at exp uh, blink experiment the basic experiment so for that i need an arduino for that i'll uh, search i'll click search button i'll take up arduino uno r3 r3 is just a, a version number I'll take it and place it on the workspace now i need a breadboard that's breadboard small i'll type breadboard take it and place it next to the arduino now for blink explain what we need we need one led and one sensor we'll be taking that in from the components list i'll type led before uh yeah i'll connect it to the breadboard so in virtual uh space this in thinkercad uh you can see arduino arduino what what is an led led is just a pin junction diode right so it has a positive side and a negative side you can see a bent over one pin that will be your positive side and you can see a uh, straight line that will be your negative pin in real space this is rgb don't look, consider this green and a red pin just think that uh, we have only two pins this will be a negative and blue it is written as blue to power up uh, to bring a uh, glow blue light but think it is as it has the positive side now in, uh, in the LEDs uh, that we buy uh, physically in physical market, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, internal circuitry like this. The longer, uh, the straight thin uh, wire, the thin strip is your positive end, and your T-shaped, T-shaped or oddly shaped pin will be a negative terminal. So we don't need that. I just move that from the file. Perfect. Now I need one resistor. I'll, uh, now it is it's here, so I know I no need to search for that. I'll take it, click on that resistor, drag your mouse, click on R to rotate the resistor, and place at the negative side of your LED. Now, uh, before I change the value, uh, check the colors carefully. This is one kilo ohm resistor. So the color is this. This is universal. You cannot change it uh, for one kilo ohm. For one kilo ohm, this is the universal resistance code. So click on that resistor. I need it in terms of ohm because Arduino gives only five volt. So a uh, bulb uh, LED needs only three volt to run properly. If you give a voltage higher than three volt in simulator, it will show an error or warning. But in real life, it will it may burst or it, it may stop. So what we should do is. We should place one resistor over here, and we don't need one kilo ohm resistance, and the bulb won't glow. If it is glowing, also it will be too dim to see. So I'm changing it to a, a lesser number of uh, ohm. So I click on this K ohm, and I select. I'll select ohm, then I'll change this one to 220 ohm. As soon as I change, see the color code have been changed. This is a standard standardized color code for 220 ohm resistance. I guess this is clear. Yeah, uh, Sibin, or not. So, uh, students, as you see, uh, Sibin tried to change the ohms over here, right? So, this is being a virtual thing. You can change the ohms, okay? But given a physical world, manufacturers man uh, produce resistors in a given, okay? In a default uh, kilo ohms or ohms, okay? Those values will cannot be changed, okay? When you buy it, you have to buy it based on their own given manufactured value, okay? And why, why, why are we even you know, going in detail with the LED? Okay, simple as it is. When you use an LED in your circuit, okay, trust me, whenever a viewer or a teacher comes into the play, they will first ask you the basics. Do you know which 
pin is the positive and which pin is a negative. OK, that's the reason we are teaching you in depth of this knowledge. Give some attentions so that on the process you will know the complications of the program. So uh, let us go ahead with the connections. Now uh, I said earlier, sorry. I said earlier that uh, these things are uh, these port, this full lines internally short circuited so, so that I can uh, give ground to any one of this pin and I can extend a wire from any of this pin. So I'm doing the same now. Uh, I'll take any one of the ground terminal from the Arduino. We can take any one because it is internally short circuited even in uh, Arduino Uno. Take one ground, drag it down, click on it and track right. You can see it bent. The wire started bending. Now do the same. Click up, then again click, then connect it to the negative terminal. See, this is not uh, now. This there is a slight bend, extra bend. So if, if I need to connect, uh, clear the um, bend, I'll just click on that, drag that uh, circle thing to the down downside. Now it is perfect. So. Now uh, this is ground. As a convention, we follow black color for ground. So I changed it to black. Now from any of this pin, I'll take one. Uh, I'll select one port, click on it, drag into drag, and connect it to the top part of your breadboard. Now change that to black. Now the LED is collect, uh, connected with ground supply. So now we need to connect it for LED to glow, uh, glow. We need a positive power supply. How we do that? Uh, Arduino doesn't know which pin we are using. So in code, we'll uh, specify a, a certain pin. But before that, I'll select a random pin for you to uh, understand. I'll select, say, uh, I'll select 7, D7. Click on D7. Follow the same procedure. Connect it into Where is that? LED. And I'm changing the color to red because uh, this is out. This this is giving me five volt. Whenever there is a supply, will the live wire will be always red as a convention. So I guess uh, this part is clear. If this is done. Anyone can raise the hand. Yes, sir, just a second. Uh, students, if you're in sync with the teaching, please give a raise of hand. And if you have completed the circuit uh, connections also. Uh, I would prefer a raise of hand rather than a thumbs up. Okay, uh, let me mention this. This is a team uh, meeting of 52 members. Okay, there are 52 students over here. So I can move forward only if there's a minimum of raise of hand. So. <clears throat> Fine. Um, thank you, students. You can kindly lower your hands. Seven, uh, start the coding part. OK, then now once the circuit is done, you have to uh, select, follow my mouse pointer and click on code. Click on that. Tinkercad, I forgot to say, Tinkercad also support code block coding. That means you can uh, put uh, some blocks and it will be automatically coded for you. So we are not uh, teaching that. So. Click on blocks again. Select text. A dialog box will appear. Select continue and delete the already written code. I think everyone have, must have done this. Yeah, so then you can start with the coding part. Uh, just a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, one second. Um, Suprit, is this hand of uh, your raised hand? Is it for doubt or is it for the this thing? Okay, got it. Uh, Syed Rai, I'm sorry, uh, Danish. Yes. Danish, there's a raise of hand by you. Is it for the doubt? Okay, just a second, Suprit. Danish, you'll be able to unmute yourself so that you can come up with a doubt. So please unmute yourself. I'm not able to lower my hand. Uh, come again. 
I'm not able to lower my. Okay, okay, fine. I'll do it on your behalf. Okay, no problem. Okay, and uh, shake. Psych. I'm sorry if this pronunciation is right or not. You are. You have raised your hand as well. So hail. Okay, yeah. So hail. This raise of hand. Okay, uh, so hail. You will be able to unmute yourself for a while. Uh, check. Do let me know if it is by mistake or do you have a doubt. So hail. <clears throat> okay, fine. Uh, seven, okay. carry on with the other thing. So uh, moving forward to the coding part. Basically, all coding and all programs will contain three parts in common. All ordinary uh, programming. One is global variable. The other one is void setup, and the other one is void loop. Global variables uh, will declare variables over there, and uh, I'll explain you when I uh, go into that experiment. Now we are, uh, as this is the first experiment, we'll be focusing only on the void setup and void loop function. What is void setup? What vo void setup basically what it means is when you power your Arduino, certain programs should execute first before uh, uh, starting uh, before going to the loop program. It just it need to be executed only one time. That type of uh, program will be will come under void setup. Basically, uh, we assign pins. We begin a channel to communicate to the lab uh, computer or system that you have. Basically, these things will be done through void uh, void setup part. Now, coming to void loop. If you want to uh, uh, repeat a process again and again and again, we use void loop function. This uh, this will be in an infinite loop till you uh, switch off your power supply. Whenever you are uh, giving power, the loop will repeat infinite times. So moving, I'll just start coding. Remember, this is case sensitive. You have to follow my exact language. Like when I, whenever I uh, type in capital letter, you have to follow capital letter. You have to type capital letter. Yeah, uh, so when you can go with the coding, so let's start uh, the explanation. Now, yeah, uh, okay. students, uh, do give a keen note. OK, that this is a uh, case sensitive. When I mentioned case sensitive, it means that if you are typing it in a small letter, it should be in small. If I'm typing it in caps, it should be in caps as precise as it is. Only then will your code be able to run and we can go ahead with start simulation. OK, uh, students, so as you can see over here, uh, Sabine has typed void setup. OK, now void setup is a function which is defaultly called by the Arduino Uno. OK. Now this function will be called once and it will run only once. OK, that is why we go with this and this is the first function that's going to be called by the Arduino irregard of any other function. OK, irrespective of any other functions, void setup will be the first function to be called. OK, and when you go inside the setup function, you can see pin mode. What is pin mode? OK, uh, please pay attention that M is caps over there. OK, pin mode. Now pin mode is simple as telling what is the work of that pin. Either it can be input or output. Okay, there are only two modes of function that is like input or output. Okay, so pin mode, you should specify the pin. So now we are specifying the pin name as seven. Okay, digital pin seven is going to work as an output. So that is going to be the output function. So that's it, simple. Now when you go for the next function, void loop. Okay. Void loop will be called right after the setup function. OK, in case you have not mentioned any other function, void loop will be called. This will be called once, but the running of void loop will be infinite. Please pay attention. The running of void loop will be infinite. OK, unless and until there is a termination inside the function. OK, it will not get terminated. It will be running for an infinite time of period. All right, so that's the reason we go for void loop. OK, and when you jump inside the void loop right now, we can see Sibin has typed digital write. Why is digital write used over here? You can see that seven. OK, the pin seven comes. I mean, it falls under digital pin. That is the why the digital is used over here. OK, and write. Why are we writing? OK, there are two methods, read and write. Read will be taught to you right after the few modules. So right now, let us stick with write. Now, Digital write is going to give some input from the Arduino Uno to the board. I mean to the pin. OK, now the board is telling that digital write 7 comma I, which means that the pin 7 is going to give a value output value, which is going to be high. 
Okay, and later you can see in the third uh, sentence, digital right seven comma low, which means after a certain time it is going to be low. So the board is telling the pin to off its current. So that's the reason of digital right, the function of right, and mm -hmm. the delay function I will be telling to you after we simulate it. So seven. Okay, uh, stop simulation seven. Uh, students, if you are in sync with the coding and you have done the coding part, please give a raise of hand so we can start simulation and explain the experiment. Okay, uh, thank you students. You can kindly lower your hands. Uh, seven. Uh, seven, stop simulation and remove the delay. Yeah, start simulation and zoom in on the LED. Uh, students, please uh, observe the kind. Okay, uh, seven, zoom in on the LED. Yes, uh, students, as you can see over here, we have given that two commands. Okay, we have given the two commands telling that to be on and off, but we are not able to observe it. Okay, so that's the reason we are going to use delay. Delay is nothing but it is going to give a time period for our human eye to observe the difference or the progress. Okay, uh, seven, add the delay. And students, remember, if you want to alter the code, you need to stop simulation. Okay. You will not be able to alter the code unless and until you stop the simulation. Uh, Sibin? Yes, and as you can see now, you are able to observe the on and off of the blinking of the LED. See, that is the reason why we have used delay. Okay, and delay will be counted in milliseconds. So that 1000 will be given as one second and 500 will be given as 0.5 seconds. Remember, delay will be taking the values in as milliseconds. Okay. Uh, okay, seven. And uh, also, right, are taking values as microsecond, but for that we need to write delay microsecond as a keyboard. Okay, uh, Sumit, you have raised your hand. May I know if this is a raise of hand for doubt? Sumit S. Okay, and uh, Kirti Raj. Even you have a raise of hand. If this is a raise of and for doubt, please keep the same and I'll try to unmute you. Kirti Raj. Okay. Uh, Kirti Raj, you'll be able to unmute yourself. Please. Yeah, I have a doubt in the code. I didn't understand. Uh, yes, sir. Tell me, Kirti. Pin mode, I didn't understand what was okay, it. Okay, uh, I'll explain that. So, what pin mode is? Pin mode tells Arduino how to configure a certain pin. Digital pins can be used either as input or output, but we need to tell Arduino how we intend to use the pin. So basically, I'll just say, just read that word, pin mode. What is pin? In simple words, in layman's language, I'll explain. What is pin? The pin that we selected. What is that? Seven. So I wrote seven. Mode. What is our mode? We are taking out value. To, in order to uh, blow the LED, we need to uh, get five volts from the Arduino. So that so, will be our output. So we write output. But uh, in, if you are connecting some sensors, say uh, other sensors, which may require taking in value to the Arduino board. So in that case, we write uh, input instead of output. Is it clear? Yeah, I so, got it. Yeah, Kirti, that's nothing but more will be giving. Output is that you're going to supply from the board. Input is that you're going to take a uh, reading from the component. Okay. Uh, yeah, now can you uh, even explain the digital right of high? Why it is high? Okay, fine. Uh, as as uh, as Sabin has explained that digital can have only two values, low and high. Okay. Right now, the pin has been given as output. Okay, so it will be an output pin, but it is not going to give you a current. It will start supplying your current only if you mention it. Okay, so this is why I'm going to say digital right, telling the Arduino on a board to supply the current. So to supply the current, it should be high voltage. So it's going to, I'm mentioning it as I, okay? And if it's going to be off, it should be of no voltage or lower voltage, which is zero. I have mentioned it as low. Is it clear? Uh, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, Kriti. Uh, fine. If you have no more doubts, I would request you to lower your hand. Okay, yes. I presume that all of you are in sync with the teaching and the coding part. Uh, seven, move to the next one. And now the next part will be the replication of the same thing, but it's going to be a replicate of the LEDs. Okay, uh, Seven. Yeah. Before I start, uh, if you want to delete a connected wire, click on that wire and press on delete button. Oh, I need, uh, I'll take three more LEDs. No, two more LEDs I'll take. So I'll type LED, take one LED, paste it over here. The other one, I'll place it over here. So that's done. Now I need a resistor. I'll take a resistor. Press R to rotate. Place it over here. Remember, don't uh, place it here. This is a uh, positive terminal of uh, the uh, first LED. Don't place it over here. It should connect to the negative terminal of the second LED. I'll take other one more uh, resistor. Press uh, R to rotate. Uh, give us space over there. Okay. Now you have to change the resistance value. As I said earlier, click on the resistor, change it from kilo ohms to ohm, change it to 220 ohm. It will be the same step in other uh, resistor. 220 ohm. Now I need to supply three uh, supply voltages. I need to supply three uh, voltages. So I can connect any of this pin. I can select any of this pin. If you are not coded, if you are uh, in program, I'll explain. Uh, now you can select any of the pin, but that pin should should be there in the your code. So I'm taking as uh, 246. I'll take 246 D2. I'll connect to the positive terminal of the LED and I'll change the color to red. Now from D4, I'll do the same step, but I'll connect to the second LED and now I'll change the color to blue. I'll tell why I've changed it to blue. Now I'll take it from uh, digital light six, pin number six, do the same step and let it be a uh, green itself. Now all these LEDs are red. So I, I, I can change the color of the LED by clicking on the uh, by clicking on the uh, LED. Just click on the LED. A dialog box will appear. Change it to I'll change it to blue. That's why I've uh, previously made uh, the wire as blue. I'll change that to blue. Blue LED. Do the same step but this time I'll change it to Green. Perfect. Now the circuit is ready. No, wait. Uh, if this is incomplete, we need to uh, provide ground connection. So I'll do the step. I'll take one uh, common ground from here. I'll connect it with this rail. Do the same. Change the color to black. Yeah. It copy the circuit. Now, raise your hand once you are done. Yeah, students, if the circuit connections has been done, give a raise of hand. Uh, Seven, so give a zoom in so that they may even have a perfect review. Uh, students, as I said earlier, this workshop is for you guys. So I, we will only be able to move if you have been, you know, in sync with the teaching. So there are 52 attendees and there's nine rays of hands. 
So I will wait for a few more and then we'll move ahead. Sibin, I guess you can just open the code part. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the coding will be similar to the program. Yes, okay, seven. But uh, now, students, thank you. Kindly lower your hands. Yeah, but now, yeah. now you will uh, we'll be introducing you to the serial monitor. That's one more function of Arduino IDE. It will be introducing to the serial monitor. But first, I'll write the code for you. Okay, uh, students, as you can observe in the coding part, there's a new line, okay, serial dot begin. Now, why have we used this over here? Now, as you can see in the same uh, right hand side, in the bottom you see serial monitor, okay? So, to get a connection to that, we need to connect it, okay? So, this is why we are going to tell serial dot begin. That will give you a connection to the given serial monitor, okay? And now we have specified as 9600. Why is this? Because there are multiple other ports available for CDO monitor. Okay. As a default, we always use 9600. Okay. Remember, as a default, we will always use 9600 for the given output in a serial monitor. Okay. And in the previous experiment, we have taught you what is pin mode and why it is output. And as you go down, uh, Sibin, I guess you have to open up the void loop function. Oh, yeah, no problem. As you can see over there, it has been given as serial dot print ln uh, bracket inverted comma LED one on. Okay, so what is this going to give us? So when we're going to simulate the circuit, if the LED is on, we can know, know that by the glow of LED. Okay, in case if you even want a uh, what do you say a text format. In the serial monitor, we're going to print LED 1 on. That is the, what is a function of print LN. Okay, serial dot print LN. And why is it is print LN and why not print? If it's just print, okay, get this in your mind. If it's just print, it will be printing one after the other in a array format. But if it is print LN, it is going to, going to print one below the other. Okay, it is going to go for a new line and print the given sentence or the lines. All right. And as you can see over there, you can just copy it and replicate it for the other two LEDs. OK, students, remember the first <coughs> five lines is the same thing for the rest of the two LEDs. OK, we are not providing you with the code as simple as that because copy paste is easy. OK, but over here it is case sensitive and I will require you all to get used to this, this language because on the module, I mean, on the day shop workshop of day two, we will be using a lot of this coding part. Okay, so that's why please give some attentions and check it over here. 
Sabin, check if you have closed the void loop. Mm, you're not. Yeah, okay. Uh, just a second, Sabin. Well done. Uh, students, if you have completed your coding part, please give a raise of hand. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, seven, just hold on. Okay, there's 10 members raising your hands. Uh, fine, uh, we will give another two minutes for all of you to be in sync. Uh, students who have raised your hands, thank you. Kindly you please lower your hands. Uh, students, uh, please check the chat box. There's a Google form link provided. Uh, it will be active only for five minutes okay you can stop whatever you're doing right now go to the form fill the form and then come back to the simulation part okay students please pay attention there's a google form link provided in the chat and it will also be provided in your whatsapp group go to the form fill it up okay this will be active for five long minutes i repeat just for five long minutes log in i mean just uh, give the details and that will be considered as your attendance okay uh i'm sorry uh, can you raise your hand Tachin? i am unable to pronounce your name yeah yeah you can unmute yourself uh, Sahif, I guess you will be able to unmute yourself. I was uh, asking what is serial monitor. I did not understand what serial yeah, monitor is. I will is. tell you. Uh, no, I just wanted to know how we pronounce your name. I'm sorry. So. Okay, Sahif. You again. are pronouncing it correct. Sahif, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll just get back to you on the serial monitor, Sahif. Give me a second. Uh, students, be aware that the link will be closing in five minutes. Okay, it will be only active for five minutes, so please get to it. Uh, Vishnu, okay, okay, Vishnu, you'll be able to unmute yourself. Why was your and up? Okay, presuming that there were no doubts. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, now I would ask, ask you again for the students to check and tell me if they are in sync with the coding. Students, give a rise of hand so that I can check if you're in sync with the coding and we can move to the simulation part. Serial monitor will be showing you in the simulation part. You'll get okay, an idea. Yeah. Um, thank you, students. Kindly lower your hands. Uh, <clears throat> Subin, go ahead yeah. with the simulation. And students, remember that I will be downloading attendance form from the teams. So I will be the reason why we have asked you to for, you know fill the form is just to cross verify. Okay, in case of there's some error, so don't think that you can just fill it and leave the meeting. I have a bit of ethical thinking, and let us try to finish this uh, workshop as soon as possible. Uh, Seven. Yeah. Now you can see when I executed the program, started the simulation. See the serial monitor. It is showing the value that I've written in pre serial dot print line. Whatever I have written, that is being shown in serial monitor. Now this uh, this thing has no uh, very. If you are interfacing with the uh, sensors, if you are uh, like my ultrasonic sensors, you want to see whether at the particular time is it on or off. So. Uh, we do that. We communicate through uh, Arduino, and you know that now. You know that Arduino communicates through uh, to laptop through serial dot begin nine six zero zero a separate channel. So we 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 won't be able to see that. So for humans to visualize that, we need serial monitor. 
the uh, transformation the information being sent through the channel will be visible to us through the serial monitor i think uh, this explanation is sufficient yeah uh, just a concept uh, kirti can you raise your hand ma'am so that i can unmute you you said you have a doubt oh yeah uh, yes kirti you will be able to unmute yourself yeah like uh, in the pin mode part uh, we had connected it to minus 6 does it matter if it is a negative sign or anything uh like 6 and minus 6 is there so i was confused with that part okay uh seven zoom in on the part okay seven uh kirti just a second seven will explain your doubt what uh this things right 3 5 6 9 10 11 yeah yeah on the digital pin yeah yeah that is that is not a negative symbol that is asterisk symbol in theory i've said that about i've uh, drawn a figure duty cycle i've said that that's called pulse yeah, width okay. modulation now uh, when i turned it on you are not getting any voltage in between um, you, you are not getting 2.5 volt right you are not uh, able to control the voltage of that led or i can say the uh, intensity of that led blowing so to control that i'll use this thing. this is just special purpose pins 3 5 6 9 10 11 but if you are using that pin and you are using that for controlling anything controlling the flow of voltage you need to write analog write instead of digital write basically it just gives out analog signals by modulating the signal using pulse width modulation okay so then give me a second okay uh, kirti uh, let me put in a simple words okay those are not minus signs those are let us say that those are special characters okay those pins have a special character to use when we use it in pwm okay uh yeah like while writing the code we are in, uh, he told like we have to write it in like instead of digital write we have to write analog write for that uh, special purpose character pin yes uh, on the coming forward uh, this and modules will be telling you what is analog write okay okay uh, so like in the present code that. we have to write like analog write of 6 like that we have to write no no, no that's what no. uh, uh if you are using an, if you are writing analog write the pin number you you have to write but instead of high and low you have to write a number a number that number i'll say like uh, this is a 8 bit processor the conversion rate will happen in 8 bit one second uh, kirti repeat your doubt like uh, yeah, like in, uh, he told like for uh, like this special uh, character pen if we are writing the code instead of digital write we have to write like analog write of 6 comma uh, the value any value yes yeah okay that's the exact syntax and You have doubt. The range as a, will be from zero to two fifty five. Okay. So that guys, face your doubt. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, sir. You can lower it. Okay. Fine. Uh, I presume I assume that all are in sync with the coding as well as the circuit part. Ah, uh, seven. I I think you can move ahead for model two. I'm stopping the simulation now. Yes. Okay. Click on this Tinger Cat logo. Press on Create New Circuit. Do the same procedures. Change the uh, name to X or Module Two, whatever. Then in the component list, make it as called. the module 2 the first experiment will be interfacing with ultrasonic sensor i'll show you the uh, first i'll code that then by looking at the code we'll design the circuit by the time i code sam will be there uh, explaining you what is ultrasonic sensor i'll take out ultrasonic sensor type ultrasonic sensor and you can see two types of ultrasonic sensor the one we'll be using will be of four like ultrasonic sensor that is it's hc sr04 click on that drag your mouse place it in near to your arduino okay uh, students if you want to know the difference between this and another ultrasonic sensor is simple this sensor seven move the yeah this sensors okay this ultrasonic sensor will be consisting of four pins okay and uh, other one will be consist of three pins so we will always go with the one which is having consistent four pins why because this is a modern on the newer version okay that's the reason okay now i can you can see in the component 
it is mentioned the four pens have been given name vcc trick echo and ground vcc is nothing but the input voltage to the component and ground as we all know it is a neutral thing okay so when you're going to connect an output i mean the voltage input you have to connect it to vcc and the ground for neutral is gnd ground okay and trick and echo okay now what is trick trick is a shortcut for trigger all right and echo as we all know it's a basic name as echo okay now trigger and echo how does it work okay now consider both as two pins once if you give an on button okay the ultrasonic sensor will start producing ultrasonic waves okay this will start start moving in one direction okay and we are going to off the pin when you off the pin and this ultrasonic sensor will be trill traveling okay it will be traveling in a given certain dimension once if it comes in contact with an object or an body it will bounce back okay this ultrasonic waves will bounce back directly opposite okay it is going to bounce back to the ultrasonic sensor okay let's say now a is the point of produce production okay it's going to produce ultrasonic wave it's going to start producing and we going to stop and let's say it is in a circular manner so it will start producing and it's be in a circular manner in case if there's a body in that radius it is going to bounce back okay these waves going to go going to bounce back from there and going to hit the sensor and this we will be taking in and calculating the time so by calculating the time we will also be calculating the distance okay and now in the coding part you can see that they we have in the first four lines it is predefined okay int is standing for integer this okay. global variables yes uh, so int stands for integer okay and trig are the variable names okay we are just assigning three okay instead of calling three you can even call trig trig will also be the value assigned with three okay and why are we you know assign this in the very beginning simple because these four values can be multiply used in any of the given functions okay that is why it is named as global variable it can be used in any of the functions n number of times okay that is why we are initializing it in the very beginning now in trig okay now trig will be given to third pin ultrasonic wave trig pin will be given to 3 echo will be given to 5 okay and also we are giving a variable known as duration and dist dist is for the distance okay it is just a short name duration as i said you to calculate the length okay the waves are going to go travel and going to bounce back and come back to the point of produce so this is why we are going to calculate the duration okay and now next in the loop function you can see the step by step fun you know <clears throat> work of the so, ultrasonic wave sensor so ultrasonic sensor is simple you're going to on the trick you start producing and you're going to off the trick low after period of delay 0.1 second okay you're going to on it and off it after 0.1 second when you on it it's going to start producing and when you off it it will not produce any waves now this produced wave will start traveling towards the i mean the state it is going to travel in front of the say, uh, sensor okay and if there is any object or any body coming in front of the sensor this wave is going to counter in turn okay it is going to bounce back when this does it we going to calculate the duration okay we are going to use pulse in let me be precise that is i n capital i pulse in okay why are we using pulse in because this waves are going to come back okay so that is why it is going to come back in a pulse so this is going to be back inside we going to take it as an input so this will be pulse in which is a keyword so we are going to say that echo will be taking this in okay only if there is an vibration or the wave going to you know come back and counter it the sensor it will be taken as i okay and after that we are going to calculate the distance okay now distance is equal to duration by 2 the entire thing divided by 29.1 okay uh, sibin yeah. if you don't mind can you just explain yeah. okay. so uh, these two lines we will calculate the distance uh, i'll explain you in a minute like these are the duration i have uh, initialized the duration like in first global variables i wrote in duration uh, that, what that means is i created a box or a container 
and I labeled them as a duration. Now I have a uh, container with me. So I'm writing the uh, label to call that container. I'm writing duration. The label will be duration. And we use pulsing. This is a keyboard. What it means is, uh, wait, I'll say, uh, echo and high. These are the arguments we are passing it into the pulsing function. Uh, this is a keyboard. So what is echo? I can write it as uh, trigger uh, low, echo low, anything you can, I can write. But for this program, the for uh, this program to work perfectly, we need to write echo high. What this means is pulsing is like a timer. Timer. So uh, when the echo pin of ultrasonic sensor goes high, the pulsing function will uh, start counting. It will start counting and till the echo pins uh, come down or uh, becomes low, it will uh, count. And that particular value uh, that is in between high to low, the changes between high to low will be recorded. And that variable, that value will be sent into the container called duration. Now we have duration, we have time. Now we have to calculate, uh, convert that into centimeter or distance. For that, I took one more container named distance. I've labeled it distance, it's a, just a container. And now what I did is, see, for example, if I'm placing an object 15 centimeter apart from, uh, from the ultrasonic sensor, the trigger, uh, the echo pin will send ultrasonic sound waves, will touch the object, bounces back, and comes to the trigger pin. So we have double the distance. The sound wave have traveled double the distance. If it is 15 centimeter apart, it has to go 15 centimeter, touch the so, uh, touch that object, and come back 15 centimeter. That no, to, uh, no, the to, total will be what 30 centimeter, right? So. Uh, if if I'm uh, not dividing it by two, we'll get 30 centimeter. It will show 30 centimeter. But my object is in uh, placed it between 15 centimeter apart. So that's wrong. So I'm dividing it by two. Now 29.1. Assume this. This just uh, think that uh, it is a constant value. We have to do it in uh, everywhere in this uh, ultrasonic sensor. But I'll explain that what it is. What is the uh, sound uh, speed of sound in dry air? It is 343 um, meter per second, right? So we are dividing it 1 by 340, 1 by 343 meter per second. That will give you around 0 0.029 or something. I'm not remembering that. Uh, that value that is in meter now, that is in millimeter, millimeter now. Now we have to convert that into centimeter. So when we convert that 0 0.029 into centimeter, we'll get it as 29.1. I think uh, this is clear now. Okay, thank you, Sibyl. Uh, so, students, as Sibyl said, uh, let me put it in a simple words. The distance, okay, the duration will be twice because the waves is going to travel to and it will come back. Okay, so this will be twice. That's the reason we are dividing duration by two. All right, and then again, we are dividing it by 29.1 because we need the distance to be in centimeters. Okay, why centimeters? Because, see, uh, there are other uh, default units such as int, uh, inch, uh, meters, uh, feet. Okay, so we have a lot of confusion when people start using this. But centimeter will always be a basic unit as centimeters. That's the reason we are dividing it by 2.29.1 to get uh, the distance in centimeters. Okay, and now if you can see it now, uh, seven drag a bit down. Sibin has used if condition. Well, if you know what is if condition and the working of it, well and good. If not, let me give you a simple explanation. If condition is nothing but it's going to check if it is true or false. If it is true, it will uh, execute certain type of codes. If it is Go for the else part and execute those set of codes. Okay, so if condition is nothing but as I said, there's going to be two options. So if condition will choose if it is true or false. Okay, so that's the simple way to say what is if condition used over here. All right, uh, seven. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, fine. This is done. Uh, students, if you have done with the co, I mean, if you're still doing the coding, please raise your hand so that you wait and then move forward. A 
Okay. And other students who have, I mean, finished the coding part, uh, please bear with us because this workshop, I require each and every student to be in track. So that's the reason we are waiting for them. So let them finish the coding part and we'll move ahead. In the meanwhile, I guess, uh, Sibin, yeah. I guess you can start up with a connection, a circuit connection. Yeah, uh, students who have finished the coding part, uh, check along with Sibin in the uh, connection part. And students, if you have any other doubts, please uh, do a drop down in the chat box so that I can verify you and call out your name. Yeah, Sibin, carry on with the connection. If you have noticed, if you have noticed, uh, for our past two experiments, we were uh, rigging up the circuit first, then we used to code. But in this experiment, we first coded it, then we are rigging up the circuit. What's the difference? Well, uh, actually, in all industries, the coding will be done first. Then by looking at the code, we'll draw the circuit. If it is a complex circuit, like this is not a complex one, but still, we'll assume it is a complex circuit. By looking at the code, I'll teach you how to rig up the circuit. So now um, I'm concentrating on this uh, ultrasonic sensor. This one is your PCC. I'll drag it, click, bend, and I'll connect it to the 5 volt of Arduino. In theory, I said uh, these 5 volt and 3.3 volt will be giving out constant uh, voltages. I'll change that to the color to red now. Now I have to connect ground. Click on ground, drag it. Connect to any one of the ground port, any one. It, it's your wish. Then change the color from green to black. Now I am left with only trigger and echo. That's uh, that's where uh, you have to look into the code. Now, if you look into the code, I have written int trigger is equal to three. What is this? Trigger, trigger. What is this trigger? This is uh, I can give it uh, as Vikasana. Any name I can give, but still. Uh, this is trigger. So uh, for easier understanding, I've written trigger itself. So trigger is connected to pin number three. So I'll connect this trigger to pin number before that. And pin number, you know, and I'll change the color to now the trigger connection have been done. Now see, now what is left with? We have left with only echo pin. Now I'll take, what is echo pin? Echo is connected to pin number five. I'll take echo, I'll do the same procedure. And instead of three, now I'll connect it into the pin four. I'll leave this as green itself. Now the connection uh, with sensor to the Arduino has been done. Now uh, to get an output, for us to understand, we need anything like any uh, bulb or LED or a piezoelectric buzzer. So for this, I'm taking piezoelectric buzzer. Buzzer. I'll type buzzer. I'll get piezo. Click on that. Drag it and place here. Now see the code. Code, see pin mode nine. I have made it as output. Okay. Yes, uh, students, uh, let me give you a review of buzzer and a speaker. Okay. Now, buzzer and speaker are not one of the same. Okay. Buzzer is entirely different, and speaker is entirely different. A buzzer will always give you a buzz sound. Okay. A random sound. Okay. It can be unified or it can be alternative. Okay. That is buzzer. A speaker, as you can see. A speaker, well, it will give you an audio speech output. Okay, it will give you an audio speech. So when I'm going to stress you on the speech, okay, it's going to be an audio speech output that is called a speaker. And buzzer, okay, it is not going to give you an audio speech output. It is going to give you just a buzz sound. Okay, that is why we use a buzzer in the separate conditions and speaker in separate conditions. So do know these differences because quite a lot of time people tend to ask this kind of differences okay a difference between a buzzer and a speaker okay so then yeah okay. go ahead with the connection now uh piso has two terminals positive and a negative i 
select negative terminal and I'll connect it into the ground. I'll change the color to black. Now I don't need this code tag. I'll just follow up with that. Now I'll take positive. And in code, this uh, connected this uh, buzzer to pin number nine. So I'm connecting it to the pin number nine. Make it as right. So the circuitry has been done. Uh, students, please give a raise of hand if you are in sync with the circuit connection. Sibin, give a zoom in on the circuit. Uh, zoom in more, uh, Sibin. Yeah. And guys, remember, as I said in the beginning, presentation, the design of a circuit is very important. OK, how you present it to the viewer is a really important task. OK, the 49 attendees and I see eight, seven raise of hands. Uh, let me wait for minimal raise of hands and then we'll move ahead. Students, thank you. Kindly lower your hands. Uh, seven. Start a simulation. So, uh, as you can see, I've said in code, I've said the distance as 300 centimeters. What does this mean? This line means. If an object, if an object, this is the range. This, this red colored arc is the range of ultrasonic sensor. So if an object comes close to 300 centimeter, or uh, I can say if the object is placed in a bit more far, like uh, 315 centimeter, it won't uh, give an alarm sound. But if if the object comes close to the ultrasonic sensor, like uh, from 290, to, uh, sorry, 299 or 250, 250 centimeter, it, it starts giving out a buzzer sound. I'll uh, demonstrate that. See, now this is 308.1 centimeter. I guess you can see that. Now in serial monitor, I've set in such a way that when it is off, to print off. So that's why uh, serial monitor is printing off, off, off. Now, whenever I come close to, or uh, whenever I come a bit uh, close to 300, uh, the sensor, can see the sensor it's showing some animation telling it's on 136.2 centimeter i follow in such a way that it, it should turn on now it is on yeah seven is visible i'll show it again yeah now i'm going out of the field turned off serial monitor it will show off um coming into the field started uh buzzing and uh, the, you can see the animation and also in serial monitor it's showing on okay uh students if you have any doubt regarding this experiment or circuit design kindly raise your hands Okay, uh, Alekia, if this is a raise of hand for doubt. Okay, Sahih, is this a raise of hand for doubt? All right, and uh, Sai Charan Kumar, Lanka Venka, yeah, is this a raise of hand for doubt, Sai Charan? I repeat myself. Sai Charan, is this a rise of hand for doubt? Okay. Sai Charan, I guess you'll be able to unmute yourself. So please unmute yourself. 
Uh, why it's connected to only to the PWM pins like PN5? Is it mandatory or? No, no, it's not mandatory. PWM will be mandatory only if you mention it in your code. If not, it will be a regular based uh, pin. It will be a regular based uh, digital pin. Am I clear? Yeah. Also, what type of waves did uh, do? It, I mean, it, it triggers. Yeah, ultrasonic waves. Ultrasonic waves. Sure, thank you. Okay. If no more doubts, please lower hand. Yeah. Fine then. Uh, students, if you are completed this and if you are giving the getting the same output, please give a rise of hand so that we'll move forward. Uh, there are 48 percent attendees over here, so I require a minimum raise of hand to move forward. So we will stick with students to be on track and then we'll go ahead. So students, once you complete, you then only then can you raise your hand so that we'll move forward. Students, if you're facing any kind of issues, please drop down in the chat box so that we can address it and get the issues. OK. Sorry for you, can you give in an image? OK. Mm. Just a second. Sahif. Sahif. Sahif, is, if the doubt has been cleared, no problem. If it's not been cleared, Please give a rise of hand. Okay. Give a second. Yes, sorry, you can unmute yourself. I'm not able to debug it. It's Still showing yes, yes. If, if you don't mind, can you precisely read out the error you're getting? In function void, then error expected semicolon before. And what else is the coding error you're getting? Because if there's a semicolon, then I guess you need to add a semicolon to it. Oh, uh, just a second. <clears throat> okay. Um, Sahif, okay. am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if, if you could check if condition 25th line, you uh, have no, wait. an extra uh, bracket. Yeah, exactly. 32, 32nd line, you have given an extra curly bracket. No, no, 32 line is perfect. Uh, seven, oh, just a second. Three lines. Uh, uh, it should contain only two. Just like one second, one second. Uh, so if go to line number 25, you have given an extra power bracket. Do you identify it? 25th line. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, remove that 30 second line curly bracket. No, seven. That will be giving void. We have only two curly brackets. Void loop and void. No, loop. that's. Oh, one is to close the if if state else statement. No, one no. is to close the loop. No, that, that is yeah, not required. Two. Just a two. Uh, remove one. Simulate it.
Are you getting the same errors again? No, I got a different error. Okay, read out the error. Sahib, can you read out the error? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm getting a buggy sound. Is it me? No, no, I guess. It is simulating the code have been compiled correctly. For instance, the simulation won't start. Okay. Is the simulation green? No, no, no. Uh, I got a buggy sound when I started simulation. I got a simulation. No, I got yeah, new errors. Okay, read out the precise error. The screenshot and post. Okay, uh, Sahif, let's do one thing. Uh, if this is a case, uh, I'll watch check it. In. Yeah, check in now. Check in with the PR department. They'll be able to clear our doubts. And if not else, we will, uh, they'll be staying back in this meeting so that they can clear our doubts. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so students, I would like you all to lower ranks if it is not any doubt. Ashes and Ashwant. Ashes L. Okay, SSL. Uh, SSL, you have been able to unmute yourself, so please unmute yourself. Okay, I guess it is unmute. Okay, uh, fine, guys. I guess uh, this will be the end of the workshop for today. Uh, I will expect you all to come back for tomorrow as well. Only then, as I said in the mail, to, the attendance is a must to gain the certificate. Okay. And let me assure you that this certificate will be valid to you. Okay. This will give a very big validation to you. Okay. And uh, Sibin. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you come up with the homework this thing? Yeah, one second. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure, take it in. Uh, students, uh, I would like to give you a small homework, okay? It is not big or anything difficult. I'm going to give you the circuit diagram and also the course. I want you to try and execute this course and circuit diagrams in your own Tinkercad. Okay, keep it ready for, I will have a QA and a on this for the tomorrow, next day to workshop session, okay? So this is your homework for today server control okay and the course have been displayed if you want you can take a, a snap of it or the pr department will be able to display this after we leave the meeting okay check with this and please do complete this and as i said before go through the course which we have taught you for i'll be teaching on those foundations okay i'll be trying to teach more on the things which i've taught earlier all right and uh, don't worry tomorrow you will be having a surprise and uh, the surprise will not have any surprise test or anything uh, it will just be a surprise to give you a chance to you know do something creative okay so that's the surprise and as well as you know i would request you all to have a bit of ethic when you attend the meeting you know pay some bit of attention learn a few things so that this workshop will be you know a successful one and uh, in case of no more doubts or clarification i would like to leave this meeting uh seven yes, okay fine then uh Bharat. okay uh Bharat, uh pritam uh yeah Bharat, yes, uh, just check yes, just check with us uh if people are still having doubt clear it and we'll go ahead Okay, guys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you. Thank you one and all for being here and being attentive. Have a nice evening and uh, see you all tomorrow. Bye.